Let's get started by touring SketchUp's user interface, both on the Mac and the PC version. I'm able to run both versions side by side because I'm running Windows XP in emulation on my Mac through Parallels Desktop. So you see this menu up here. If you were running SketchUp on a dedicated Windows PC, you would see the title bar at the top of the screen. The title bar has the name of the file and the name of the application on it. Way over here on the extreme right side of the title bar, we have the standard Windows buttons that appear in every Windows application. Minimize, Restore down and close. And underneath that, we have the menu bar. These are just standard Windows menus. Some of them are cascading submenus. The check marks indicate that we have toggles. Some of the items are grayed out, meaning they're not available right now. A few of the items have an ellipsis following the word, which indicates that there's a dialog box that will appear if you choose this item. Still, other items have shortcuts next to their names which are quick ways of executing these options without having to go through the menu. Some of the most commonly used tools have single letter abbreviations like L is for line. Unlike in AutoCAD where you'd have to type in L enter or L return, here we just type L, nothing else. The window menu has the preferences in Windows. The system preferences are global. They affect all of the models that you open. And they affect the behavior of how SketchUp works. For example, we have the keyboard shortcuts listed here on this page. Below that, we have the toolbar, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Let's just switch over to the Mac version and take a look at how it's laid out. We have the menus at the very top of the screen here. On the Mac, we have different symbols that indicate different keys. This is the command symbol. The user-defined shortcuts don't actually appear in the menus here. These are the hard-coded command abbreviations. The window menu does not contain preferences on the Mac. Instead, the preferences are on the application menu right here. Here we have the ability to change the keyboard shortcuts. We have the close, minimize, and maximize buttons here on the left side, the name of the file. Over here on the extreme right edge, we have this white button, which allows you to turn the toolbar off and on. The drawing window here contains the template file that we chose when we launched SketchUp for the very first time. You can change that template up here on the Help menu under Welcome to SketchUp. This opens up a web dialog, and it starts out with this little video that I'm going to close. We can see down here in the template area, you can select a template. I chose this one. You should choose the template appropriate to the type of work that you do. And you'll learn later how you can create your own template, which is something I highly recommend. If you don't want to always have to be confronted with choosing a template, you can uncheck Always Show on Startup, and it will always use the same template that you have selected. The toolbars function differently on the Mac versus the PC. On the Mac, we have this toolbar at the top of the screen that we can customize in any way that we want. Go to View, Customize Toolbar, and you'll see this massive drop-down appear. This allows you to take items, drag them up, and drop them to customize the way that the toolbar works. You can also take existing items out, drop them, and they vanish in a puff of smoke. There is also some larger interface elements that I need to make some room for by getting rid of some of this other stuff. Like here's the shadow control. It has a toggle that turns on and off the shadows. It gives us the date and the time on sliders. Layers can be used like that and you can customize your toolbar however you like. If you want to go back to the way it was originally, you can just drag this set up and drop it on the toolbar, and it will go back to the way it was with a factory default. Another way you can work is using the large tool set, which is available here. This is a floating toolbar that has most of the tools that you'll ever need. Notice when I select something, it selects it here too. You see? So there's really no reason to have two kinds of toolbars on the screen at the same time. The large tool set typically has more tools than you'll be able to fit up here, so I recommend turning this toolbar off or putting different tools on it. Down here at the bottom of the screen we have toggles, and of importance right now is this question mark toggle. Click on that and you'll open up the instructor. This gives you information specific to the tool that you have selected. 
Here's the line tool. It gives me information about what to do. This is really useful in the first couple of days, and I really recommend that you read everything on the instructor as you're starting out. But once you get the hang of the tools, you'll want to close that. It takes up too much space. Last but not least, there's the measurements toolbar down here in the corner. And it actually says different things depending on what you're doing. If I have the select tool active, then it's going to say measurements. And in previous versions of SketchUp, this used to be called the value control box, or VCB. And you'll see that sometimes in the help file. But measurements is something that we all can understand. It's where you type things in to make accurate dimensions. You don't actually click in this area. You just start typing, and the values will show up down there. On the PC, the toolbars work differently. You don't have the ability to customize any of the toolbars on the PC. You can't rearrange the order in which these buttons appear or put different buttons up there. Instead, you have more granularity when it comes to toolbars. You have more toolbars, that is. We also have a large tool set, just like we do on the Mac. So if I choose the line tool, it appears here, just the same. So again, there's no reason to have both. Let's turn off getting started. If for some reason you weren't happy with this toolbar, you wanted something smaller or something different, you could go in here and select specific little sub toolbars. This is the same as that, but if we didn't want to have the large tool set, we could just have that. Maybe we also want to be able to modify things, so we'll use the modification toolbar. And you also have the ability to drag it from the corner, change the aspect ratio of your toolbar. You can drag the toolbars to the side and they will dock. You can use their handles to move them up, like that. I recommend that you don't start like this. Rather, you just start with the large tool set until you learn all the tools. And over time, I recommend memorizing all of the keyboard shortcuts, and then perhaps you won't need to use any toolbars. I'm at a point now where I don't use any toolbars. I can call for anything I want on the keyboard, and I just have that much more room to see what I'm doing on the screen. The keyboard is an essential part of the user interface, and SketchUp treats the Mac keyboard differently than the PC keyboard. And the reason has more to do with the operating systems than it does with SketchUp itself. I'm on a Mac, so if I say press Command Option S, I don't want you to be scratching your head if you're on Windows. I think it'll be a lot easier for everyone if I just stick to one set of keyboard shortcuts. Otherwise, I'd have to duplicate every operation and say, if you're on the Mac, do this. If you're on Windows, do that. In the Windows version of SketchUp, there are three modifier keys, the Alt key, the Control key, and Shift. You don't use the Windows key in SketchUp. It's for more basic operating system functions. On the Mac, these map to the Option key, the Control key, and the Shift key. The Option key actually says Alt on some Mac keyboards, cluing you into the fact that it maps to the Alt key in Windows. On some other Mac keyboards, you'll find an Apple symbol, which I'll try to sketch here, on the Option key. Or you might even see this symbol. It also means Option. In menus, you'll see the Control key represented by a caret symbol, and the Shift key is represented by an upward-facing arrow. In the Windows, you'll notice there's also a command key, and that can be used in SketchUp. It's represented by this cloverleaf symbol. The command key is only used for hard-coded shortcuts. I'll show you what I mean. If I go up here to the Mac version of SketchUp, you can see in the Draw menu that we have these shortcuts. We'll go over to SketchUp Preferences and just type in Rectangle here. And you can see that I've assigned R as my key for the Rectangle tool. 
I've assigned single letters to the tools that I use the most often. And then I've assigned the option key to tools that I use the second most often. And then I'll use control and shift or some combination of them to represent less frequently used commands. SketchUp makes heavy use of floating dialog boxes to get the job done. They're all located on the window menu. I'll start opening them up. Entity Info Soften Edges Layers Outliner, and so on. After a while, things get really cluttered, and it's hard to get any work done. You might be tempted just to close them and reopen them when you need them, but after a while that gets fairly tedious. Of course, it's always helpful to have a more powerful graphics card so you have an increased resolution and you can see more, or to have a secondary monitor where you can place all these windows. But you might not need to spend any money if you learn this tip about how you can stack these windows and control them by collapsing them together. So I'll take the Entity Info window and I'll place soften and smooth edges underneath it. When I get close it will pop into position. Then I'll place layers underneath and then I'll drag the outliner up there and dock it. Now I can move all of the windows together. I can also resize them together. You can collapse individual windows by clicking on their title bars. And when they're all collapsed, they get even a little bit smaller. I'll just put them over here. Now I'm tempted to leave that open. It's really not in the way. And if I want to get to one of the windows, I can very easily by clicking on its title bar. I recommend that you place the windows in this particular order for reasons that will become apparent later. Let's add to that list Components Styles Drag it in there there's components, and there's styles. Now it's not going to fit unless I start to collapse some of these. I need to have at least one of them open. Make this smaller. Drag that in. Okay. Let's get shadows. There's two more. We'll get fog. And the last one is scenes. Okay, let's collapse them all. Let's work like that. There are a few other choices up here, but they don't really belong in the stack. Model info is its own dialog box. Show fonts is specific to the Mac platform. It doesn't exist in Windows because this is an operating system thing. Match photo is its own can of worms. You've already seen the instructor. That's also a toggle right here. The Ruby console is used for programming, and on the Mac platform you can open multiple documents at once so you can see a listing of all of the windows that are open. You don't see that on the PC.